from a karate Kyokushin background. Karate, I'm, I'm, I'm very strong in the body. I That's was amazing. prepared. For thousands of years, martial arts have been practiced. All kinds of different martial arts. Shotokan Karate, Taekwondo, Kyokushin Karate, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Judo, Kenpo, Wing Chun. All are traditional martial arts styles used in MMA. Some could even say Muay Thai is a traditional martial arts style since it's not a modern fighting form. But the ones I listed above are more well-known traditional martial arts styles. Notice how all these art forms have been practiced by some UFC fighters or some famous kickboxers who usually end up being champions, some even being considered top 5 of all time in their sport. So after all that being said, what's the real reason I'm making this video? I'm making this video to show that there are ways traditional martial arts benefit you. Personally, I did Okinawan Karate for 5 years when I was younger, and even as a kid, they had us doing pretty practical things. And no, I didn't go to a McDojo by the way. We sparred a lot, and I think the best thing out of it was that I, it taught me a lot of lessons as a younger kid. So with that said, what are some practical implications of traditional martial arts for modern day combat sports? Philosophy. Mike Tyson's coach, Cus D'Amato, said when he was training Mike that the sport of boxing was 75% mental. So what is your philosophy? How does that affect you mentally in the cage or in the ring? You see, philosophy is in a lot of martial arts styles, such as Kyokushin Karate. It's about finding the true meaning of strength for them. Some martial arts styles believe in being as humble as possible. Most do. Some believe in fluidity through movement. And when you bunch all these philosophies together, and you basically get values or a mindset. So for example, let's say something like Judo. Judo's philosophy is to be able to cause the most damage with the least amount of effort. Okay, so how does that translate into the ring or the cage? Well, maybe that translates into a style that doesn't take much to do, or you don't throw many punches, but your punches are very powerful. It causes a lot of damage. I think Yuri Prohaska takes this to heart the most. He lives literally by the Bushido Code, a samurai code that all samurai of Japan followed at one point. Again, I think he represents philosophy so well in modern day combat sports. He's very, very humble, and he can also accept defeat. Look up Yuri's training if you haven't. He goes into the mountains and meditates in a shed. He then goes out and punches trees with ropes on him and stuff wrapped around him, and his training methods are just very unconventional, which makes him so good. Another man who, in modern day combat sports, represents philosophy pretty well is Israel Adesanya. Like, he's got that dog in him. You know what, man? The moment I post a video of me jerking off my fucking dog, they will... When he was fighting Kevin Gastelum, he mouths across the cage, I'm prepared to die. I'm prepared to die. That's one thing that a warrior or a samurai believed in. It was them being ready to die in battle. He went in there knowing that if he was seriously hurt or even worse, killed, that he was prepared and it wouldn't be an issue. So from these examples, it really shows that the effect that philosophy has from traditional martial arts on combat sports. I say even that Muay Thai, again, Muay Thai is a traditional art. It's been around for hundreds of years, longer than most martial arts. It was used as a way of hand-to-hand -hand combat for Thai soldiers. In Muay Thai, they hug it out and they battle each other after brutally beating on each other with elbows and punches and kicks. That's just simply being respectful to your partner in battle. A more diverse arsenal. We see all the basics of combat sports. The jab, the cross, the single leg takedown, the low kick, all amazing techniques that have been used to hurt opponents so why do we need any more techniques? Well, like Conor McGregor used to say and has always said that kicks in the karate stance made him more fluid and agile. And this is a big reason why a lot of martial artists are trying tricking, which is basically Taekwondo, but it's like insane trick kicks or whatever. I think the art that would add the most amount of moves to your arsenal would be Judo. We don't see many people use Judo in MMA. I know Ronda Rousey has a Judo background and Carl Parisian might just be the best example of someone who used Judo in MMA. All those crazy tosses and stuff, that's insane. I would say judo is a traditional martial art, but now it's more of a sport, but that's what most martial arts have become. You can also take fighting styles from different martial arts, for example. How do they help you fight in a different situation? For Kyokushin Karate, it's the perfect pocket fighting art. You get in close and you throw hard kicks to the legs, crazy punches to the body, and some knockout kicks to the head, but its brother Shotokan Karate focuses more on staying outside and managing the distance. Shotokan stance is like Henry Cejudo stance or McGregor stance and Wonder Boy stance. Another could be something like Wing Chun. Tony Ferguson is known for practicing this. I'll say this now so you guys can debate me, but if he would have fought in Habib, I actually think he would have won. I love Habib, but Tony was just a different man when he would have fought him. He combined the Wing Chun with his boxing, and I think after the Chandler fight, he should have started to think, maybe this is enough and I should just retire, but I digress. The Wing Chun is all about trapping. That's why in Bruce Lee's Art of Jeet Kune Do, it's all about trapping and finishing. If Lee lived, 
I believe Jeet Kune Do would probably be used as an art in MMA today considering he died so early that he didn't have enough time to develop it into what he envisioned it to be. There are many practical uses of traditional martial arts in modern day combat sports. You just have to find and implement those practical usages. Movement. So movement is just the umbrella that covers all kinds of things like flexibility, mobility, strength, everything. I think traditional martial arts make you more fluid in movement and that's what a lot of martial arts practitioners aim for, fluidity in movement. I think a lot of traditional martial arts also incorporate tons of stretching in proper warmups. When I did Okinawan Karate, it's almost like Kyokushin, but we would warm up, do Kihon, Kata, and then Kumite. And in the middle, we'd do some stretching or at the end, and a lot of it was based on flexibility and being more fluid in our motions. That's one thing about Okinawan is that it's not just a bouncy style, it's kind of like a switch. It can go from bouncy with the hands up just to just a like normal squared boxing stance, kind of. This is what I mean by fluid in motions, being able to switch and adapt a certain style when needed, yet... How do traditional martial arts make you more flexible? I think they make you more flexible since you don't really neglect stretching. I see many modern day martial arts neglect stretching and mobility work. That's just the stupidest thing not to do. Like, just stretch. It's not that hard. Stretch for maybe 10 minutes a day. And a lot of these martial arts do a ton of mobility work. Again, jujitsu is one of them. I train Japanese jujitsu for like a little bit, maybe like seven months. And the chokes and stuff are crazy because it's all gi stuff and you need that mobility for it. I think another good martial art that has emphasis on like strength is judo and kyokushin karate they both use weightlifting as a way of conditioning judo guys are huge like they are extremely jacked and kyokushin guys are very lean because strength is required for these martial arts and i think they're most focused on bodybuilding and athletic style training while combat sports are athletes are like they're focused on solely on athletic and powerlifting which if you combine all these you get a decent physique and a ton of strength and power for your combat sport footwork so this only applies to a select few martial arts that are traditional karate and taekwondo being the big two since these arts teach you how to move and spring around your opponents i think a large problem in mma today is people aren't springy enough they stand there very rigid and stiff and that's why they get hit with those crazy leg kicks the whole time the only person that can be fluid and rigid at the same time that i've seen and you can say other people, but Ilya Taporia, he has a lot of weight distributed evenly and is in a wider boxing stance, but he keeps that rigid guard. So he's able to manage the distance like a beast. He's crazy at moving. He's, he's actually one of the best boxers I've ever seen in MMA. Someone he fought like Josh Emmett had all of the pressure on his front leg, leaving him open to those leg kicks by Taporia. And then eventually, he, I'm pretty sure he got knocked out. So you see these fighters that don't manage the distance well and they can't bounce around like the ones that are so good at like traditional styles which leads me to thinking if you train these traditional martial arts it's going to be beneficial and in taekwondo you're supposed to get in and kick without being kicked you keep your hands low and you start bouncing into kicking range same goes with shodokan karate you bounce in but you have punches just notice how these guys are extremely explosive too that translates to boxing or mma so well and it's extremely deadly like people will hate to spar and fight you because they won't be able to hit you. It's going to be impossible. You're going to be so explosive. So the one key takeaway from this section is bouncing around and being able to hit without being hit, which is basically boxing, is extremely important for modern day combat sports. So I know this video wasn't so informative and I wasn't giving you like the four steps to be more explosive, but I want you to take away from this video that you should be trying to implement these traditional things into your style. And I think they'll benefit you. Plus, I've tried them in sparring, and a lot of them work even against really good fighters. So, alright bro, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure to go like, subscribe, and check out that Baki workout and diet course. It has amazing information, just like in this video. And go take a look at our Discord server. God bless.